Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be super fun and super different. I was on Twitter yesterday and I was tweeting about old vintage makeup ads that I love looking at. It is so fun just to Google super old makeup ads. So I was just tweeting some of my favorites and kind of laughing at them because the things they say on them are insane. I'm going to show them throughout this video because we're going to be actually following along these ads to do our makeup today. An awesome viewer suggested on Twitter that I actually recreate these ads and kind of do a makeup tutorial based on the tips and recommendations of the makeup ads themselves. So hey Michelle, shout out to you. Thank you so much for requesting this video. I'm really excited. I think this is going to be super fun and I love your idea so much. So thank you so much for following me. Thank you for giving me that video request and I hope you enjoyed this video. So as I said, we're going to be following along these makeup ads that I found online. But not only that, I did a little more digging and I found some real authentic like 1950s, 1940s makeup tutorials. These are like real, you guys, filmed way back in the 50s. I have three videos that I watched that are amazing. They're amazing because they're almost terrifying as well. Um, but I thought we could follow along their directions too, since these are like legitimate little makeup tutorials that were produced way back when. So we're going to be following along with these super old makeup tutorials, as well as adding in some elements from a lot of the makeup ads that I saw online. So I'm excited. This is super fun to hop back and kind of do our makeup like they did way back when. But also I do want to say this was actually a terrible time for women, terrible time for women of color. It was a terrible time for a lot of people, anyone with a different religion. It was just a hard time. So, so not to be that person, but I don't want to glamorize the 1950s and things like that. There are things that are funny and we can reference, but we do want to keep in mind that this was a terrible time for a lot, a lot of people. So on that note, <laughs> Are you guys ready to do our vintage makeup look? I'm super excited. I tried to grab all products that would be as close to what they're using in these tutorials and in the makeup ads that I'm going to be showing you throughout this video. You guys are going to be able to see the old makeup tutorials as well. I'm going to insert those into my video so we're really watching along together. And like I said, I really tried to pull items that were as close to what they were using in this video. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get started. And now for your satin clean skin and makeup. A clean look makeup to bring out all your natural feminine beauty. Feminine? <laughs> makeup is a study in itself. You'll want not only to know how, but when to use it. For instance, you wouldn't anymore go to school wearing mascara and eyeshadow and lipstick than you would go to school wearing an evening gown. <laughs> oh my god, if they could see us today! The nerve! Wearing makeup to school. It's as if you would show up in an evening gown. <laughs> the mockery! Consider first a foundation. Foundation are bases which go on over throat and face to add a texture and color to Oh sh oh, she's just slapping it on there. Oh my god, that's that's a lot that's not your shade, honey. Till the foundation's completely unnoticeable. Wow, she just really got right to it. Okay, so for foundation, I'm gonna be using the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. I chose this because Revlon has been around for a very long time. And as you can see here, she's not using any fancy tool to apply her foundation. She's just slapping it right on there. Lord have mercy. That's a lot. Honey, that is not your shade. But okay, so she kind of went like this, like this, like this. Whatever the type of foundation, smooth it into the skin. Blend and keep blending till the foundation is completely unnoticeable. To choose the right color, study yourself. Your total coloring is strictly your own. Experiment on your face to find the right foundation color. Don't use your foundation as a thick mask. No matter how thickly you put it on, you can't hide a badly cleansed, broken out skin. I think modern day full coverage foundation would beg to differ. <laughs> we can cover anything these days. <laughs> So I'm just blending with my fingers as they did. And as she said, foundation is for the face and the throat. So don't forget your throat. It's just weird. I think it's weird hearing her say throat. I do blend my foundation down onto my neck just to make sure I don't get any of those horrible chin lines. But to hear her use the word throat is just like, I don't know why it's, it makes me a little uncomfortable. Who is this like doctor walking around monitoring these women? Oh my God. Fun fact, there was no concealer for quite a while. So these ladies would just use their foundation as their concealer. By the way, these videos have been posted by a channel called Glamour Days, and it's an awesome channel. Very, very cool. I really recommend you check it out. They have a lot of authentic vintage videos, but the videos themselves actually come from the National Film Preservation Foundation. So it is pretty cool that we have these to look back on. All right, so my foundation is applied. I wonder what she would think of my application. She actually sounds pretty serious, so I'm terrified to know what she would think. I think she would hit me. Let's see what's next. 
Now to the question of rouge. Now to the question of rouge, indeed. <laughs> rouge is a tint, not a paint. Use slightly and blend it on, and slightly below the bone under your eye. Again, blend and keep blending. So what I've been noticing in these videos and in a lot of the ads, no one is using powdered rouge. Everyone is using a cream rouge. I thought I would use my Too Faced Peach My Cheeks blush today. Now I want to show you guys an ad for rouge or for pancake makeup. Here is the ad. It's by Max Factor. That's another really old makeup brand. Been around forever. And it says, for that beautiful morning look right through the day. <laughs> and like, look at that blush. That is crazy sauce. It's all the way up to her brow. It's covering her whole cheek. Now, there actually is a method to applying your rouge back then. It actually has its own name. It's the Tri-Dot system. If you use rouge, try putting it on with the Tri-Dot system. Oh, she looks absolutely horrifying. Oh my God. I mean, beautiful woman, but Jesus, she wouldn't like me at all. One dot directly under the pupil of the eye, the second on the cheekbone, and the third no lower than the tip of the nose. Now fill in the triangle lightly and blend in carefully until no one can see that the rouge is there. Not even you. Nothing dates you as much as rouge that shows. Okay, so directly under the pupil of the eye is a little higher than I normally would do. And as you heard, she recommends uh, blending it so much that no one can see it, not even you. But when looking at these photos, like, you can see it. It's very obvious how much they love their rouge. Doesn't she sound, like, strict? My god. I love that there's an actual tri-dot system. I think that's really funny. Can you imagine any influencer or beauty tuber telling you to place your rouge or your blush directly under the pupil of the eye? That's certainly not a trend I hope to bring back. All right, so I believe next we are moving on to eyebrows. And I was happy to see that they used brow pencils. I also have a lot of ads where they actually use, it seemed to be something of like a dip brow situation, like a little cream. Again, this ad is by Max Factor. The natural idea is Max Factor's new brush and brow eyebrow makeup. Now that makeup looks so natural, why should eyebrows scream fake? It's so funny, this woman has the absolute most beautiful brows I've ever seen, but there's nothing natural about them. <laughs> again, there's also this one by Maybelline. It was for their Ultra Brow product. And again, in this photo, you can see the bright pink cheeks. I love in the videos that we're watching right now, they just go on and on and on about looking the most natural. But at the end of the day, at the end of everything, they don't look natural at all. They're quite heavily made up, actually. <laughs> so for brows, I'm using my CoverGirl eyebrow pencil. And let's see what they recommend. The eyebrows frame the eye, not to be noticeable in itself. Just accent the natural look. Sketch out the line of each hair in the direction in which the hair grows, beginning with the line parallel with the corner of the eye, blending at the end of the brow. Don't let the end of the line droop. I agree with that. This is pretty simple. Pretty much what we do today. Just try to accent. And then, taking a small comb, turn down the tips of the hair. You'll have a beautiful, clean line. A small comb? I don't have a small comb! What do you mean? Okay, I guess I'll just take my pencil comb and brush the hair down. This almost like grosses me out. We're so into like feather brows now and like fluffing them up. It's so strange to brush the hair down and curled in. I don't like it at all. <laughs> so next we're getting into eyeshadow and I actually really just want to follow all of these eyeshadow ads. There are so many with this teal aqua blue eyeshadow like it was all the rage we have maybelline's ultra shadow you can see she just has this really teal eye kind of a turquoise and a coral lip like that was the look turquoise eyes and coral lips so what i noticed in a lot of these ads is that they really loved eyeshadow sticks eyeshadow sticks were all the rage so the closest thing i could find to like an aqua e teal eyeshadow stick that i had in my collection is NYX Electric Blue, but it doesn't quite have the same effect. So I actually pulled my Maybelline Brights eyeshadow palette and we're gonna top it with this metallic creamy color. So I'm just going to place this lightly. Eyeshadow is also an aid to eye beauty. Choose a color that brings out your own eye color. Blue for blue eyes. Using just a bit of the shadow in your finger, Begin tracing the line as close to the lid edge as possible. Blue eyeshadow for blue eyes, you guys. Seriously. 
That is so funny. We would never recommend that today to pull out your blue eyes. You would recommend a contrasting color to really get those colors to pop. So just blending this onto the eye. Wow, I'm really starting to feel like a 1950s housewife. Wow. <laughs> This is not my favorite. So now again, to give us that really 1950s vintage makeup look, we're gonna add a little bit of this white metallic from the Maybelline Brights palette. How appropriate, we're using Maybelline, right? And I'm just gonna set that on top of the eyeshadow. And yes, that's elevating it to the color I really kind of wanted and kind of giving us that super tacky, horrible <laughs> metallic shine. Now, metallics and shininess used in the correct way are not tacky and terrible, but this is horrible. <laughs> It looks like they really brought it up all the way up. All right, so next we need to move on to eyeliner. Let's see what they recommend. It is just as important to outline an eye as it is to frame a picture. Remember, the eyes are the windows of your soul. However, you should never use an eyebrow pencil on your lower lid and never use anything but a shade of brown. Black is taboo and only tends to aid you and harden your expression. Lord have mercy! Black eyeshadow is taboo, and it hardens your expression, ladies. Do not forget. Okay, well, I have my brown eye pencil then, and as he said, never line the lower lash line. And it looks like he's blending it out with his finger, so we're just gonna run this along the lash line. Oh, but he's holding it at, like, this weird pulling angle, so... And blend that in. It's crazy how much, like, fingers were involved with makeup application. All right, I'm hoping that's appropriate. I don't think he would want me to apply too much, so I'm just going to keep it very mild there. And examine this makeup to see if everything is well blended. First, let's view the overall picture. A clean hairline. The base is blended well down under the chin, around the sides of the neck, and the cheek rouge is properly blended. Okay, you guys, I think we are ready for mascara. Can you guess what mascara we're gonna use? Take a wild guess. It's like the one mascara anyone who wears makeup has floating around in their house somewhere, even if it's like a decade old. It never changes, it's always the same, and it is bright. Can you guess? That's right, Maybelline Great Lash. This has actually been around for ages. I believe Jesus Christ himself brought it down with him. This mascara is so damn old and guarantee it will outlive all of us. <laughs> I remember when I worked in cosmetics, women would still come in all the time for their Maybelline Great Lash. My mom used it, my grandmother used it. I think everybody ever in the world who wore makeup has used this. And I actually found an ad and this ad is really, really cool. Of course, again, it's by Maybelline. It's the new Great Lash Kit. Literally, it's a kit and you can see our beautiful aqua blue shadow in that little set. Possibly foldable, compact, or just had a lid on top of it that fit in your mascara and then also like brow powder or eyeliner and then a bunch of shadows. But before we apply the mascara, I do want to curl our lashes. Women were actually curling their lashes back then. You see in this ad right here by Maybelline, it's for their new automatic magic mascara. And at the bottom, you can see they have tweezers and they have a lash curler. So we're gonna go ahead and curl our lashes. This is a Lancome lash curler. All right, now we are ready for our mascara. Let's listen and see if they have any tips for mascara application. Used too thickly, the effect is hard, vulgarizing vulgarizing goodness gracious if they could see us now with our eyelash extensions and our falsies and oh my god our tubing mascaras our mascara primers wow have we changed use tastefully use sparingly wipe brush almost dry then apply just on the top lashes only. I mean, there's not even much on this freaking great lash okay <laughs> my bad almost dry what's the point all right, well, I think it's time to set this face. We've waited long enough. It seems like they kind of wait till the very end to set the face, which is mind blowing to me. But to set the face, I have my ColourPop Powder Pop and then I could not find a drugstore translucent powder that I have um, that wasn't like pigmented and didn't have like a color to it. So I have my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. Now, let's clean up under the eye. This is the region we'll powder first. Oh, good gravy, that is a lot of powder. Oh, okay. Carefully blend your eyeshadow. Oh my God. No, he's, he's not gonna, he's not gonna put it on top of the eyeshadow. And powder the upper lid. The upper lid. Ah! 
A thorough powdering, you know, will result in a long-lasting makeup. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That would gross me out. I'm not putting the powder on top of my eyeshadow, on top of my mascara. I'm not doing it. I hope you all noticed that neat trick of powdering above and below the eyes. What are they doing to her? Oh, no. Lord, no, 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 no. Why would he put that powder on top of her eyeliner? The first thing a woman should determine is whether she has any unusually prominent features. Unusually prominent features? If so, they should be powdered last. As an illustration, if you have a large nose, a prominent chin, a bulging forehead. A bulging forehead? What the heck? <laughs> a bulging forehead? How do these sections of the face last? We must always keep in mind, when your powder puff comes out of the box, it has an abundance of powder on it. Therefore, it should always be applied first to those sections of the face where you need to create a highlight. Be sure you pack your powder on. Don't rub it, don't scrub it, and don't try to remove your surplus powder with your puff. You should always use a powder brush. Do you recommend any certain type of powder puff? The only powder puff that I recommend is a clean one, and that goes for the face too. Cleanse your face well before you start your makeup. Go ahead and use this kabuki. God, that's a lot of powder. Do you see how much she put on her face, that poor woman? That was crazy. Crazy. What type of brush is that? It looks like a like a hair like a hair brush, not like a face brush. Huh. It should be remembered that the eyebrow is a very important feature of the face. It expresses every human emotion. Happiness, sadness, joy, whatever the case may be. Well, ladies and gents, I do believe it is time for lips. Now, I saw a few ads that absolutely cracked me up. I have to share them with you because they are so, so funny. One in particular, oh my god, I tweeted this. You may have seen it already. There's actually a few. Um, this is an old, again, Maybelline ad. It was for their Kissing Potion flavored roll-on lip gloss. It says, promise Roger your strawberry kisses. There are plenty of other flavors left for Richie, Fred, David, and Bob. <laughs> I kind of love this, like, good for her. I'm glad they were letting her play the field and, you know, maybe normalizing it's okay to have a lover or two. There was this other ad that absolutely killed me. This is by Seventeen Cosmetics, which I've never heard before. You can see how he's just fawning over this woman. For that natural look men look for, Seventeen. Straw vote. Don't know what the hell a straw vote is. Straw vote among males show a landslide for the gal with the natural look. That's why so many of the sweet enough to treats go for 17 makeup. Young-minded cosmetics that catch the eye and win the heart. Which again, by the way, I just want to emphasize how they have this whole natural look thing in mind. But this girl has a red lip. The pictured lipstick is a red lipstick. She has red nail polish. There is nothing natural about this little darling. Now this color is what inspired the lip color I've chosen for this video. This is an ad by Max Factor. It says it's easy to draw a man with pink and orange. Not pink, not orange. Max Factor's outrageous new color creation that captivated all of Paris. By the way, you didn't think makeup was for you, did you? Silly girl, it's about attracting men. Everything is with a man in mind. I found this one here from Milani. I do believe this is discontinued. I tried to find it online and I could not find it. It's one of my favorites, so that kind of breaks my heart. It's Flamingo Pose, number 12. And I think it's kind of a pinky orange. I'm hoping it's what they were going for. So let's get some pointers on applying our lipstick. The use of lipsticks is one of the greatest tests in your artistry and good taste in using makeup. One of the greatest tests in your artistry, you guys. Your lipstick, okay? For the cleanest, most natural line, use a brush, a little patience, and a little practice, and you'll be an expert. Fill the brush with color. As always, you can check color by effect. Do you notice the lips themselves, or do you say, there is a lovely woman? Do you notice the lipstick or do you say there is a lovely woman? <laughs> Again, mind you, they're talking about having an unnoticeable lip color, but they are throwing red lipstick on this lady. It is as red as the day is long. That is not natural, girlfriend. Mm -mm. Trace a clean, unexaggerated line. Stain as close to the natural line as possible. If lips are too thin, fill right out to the outermost edge of the line. If too full, stop within the line. Brush in lipstick, 
filling the line right out to the corner. It's just crazy how, like, back in the day they wanted, like, thinner lips. If they could see us today, oh my god. Lipstick is your exclamation point. Use it sparingly, but well. Use two strokes to outline the upper lip, and one long stroke for the lower. Fill in with up and down strokes, so that the lipstick goes with the grain of the skin. I don't believe I ever applied eye lipstick like this. <laughs> up and down strokes with the grain of the skin. This feels really strange. Be sure that your lipstick harmonizes with your rouge and your nail polish. Be sure your lipstick harmonizes with your rouge, which I think it does, and your nail polish, which it really does not. Can you imagine changing your nail color every time you wore a certain lipstick? Although, I would imagine back in this day and age, I bet ladies had like one, maybe two lipsticks and one, maybe two nail polishes, and I think that's all that they wore. I don't think there was a lot of variation in color, so <laughs> I guess that'd probably be a little more easier for them to match their lipstick with their nail polish. And check with any reds in your costume to see that everything is in key. Am I, are we supposed to be in costume? That's strange. Now this is important. Blot off all excess. Unblotted lipsticks are pasty looking. Blot for the smooth, clean, natural look. And study the impression left on the tissue. Study it? For how long? <laughs> what are we looking for? I don't, I don't know. I think it all checks out. I'm really not fucking sure. Now, fun fact, you guys, I thought that makeup setting sprays wasn't something we had till, you know, a later time or something that people just started doing. But no, I found an ad for an actual makeup setting spray. I believe this was probably more from the 70s, just judging on the look that she has going on, not so much the 50s, 60s. This is by Lasting Beauty. It's a makeup finish. One spray and your makeup will lock fresh for five, six, seven hours, maybe more. Now, I, of course, don't have that one, so I'm just going to use my ColourPop All Star spray. Now it says one spray, but that that's not enough for me. So I'll do like two. Okay, I did like five, but whatever. You guys, that is it. We're all done with our vintage beauty look. This was so much fun. I strongly recommend you guys head over to Glamour Days' YouTube channel. Check out all of her videos she's uploaded there. Again, like authentic, super old videos, just like you saw here. She has tons of them, all types of ones. I was just watching one about gossiping. They are great. They are kind of really great. <laughs> And I am feeling like an old fashioned beauty. I'm not at all. I feel terrible. I feel really hideous. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Like I said, go check out her videos. Also do your own little research online. Check out some of the older makeup ads that are absolutely hilarious. There are so many more that I didn't even show in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was super fun for me to do. If you have any other ideas or suggestions or requests on types of videos like this to do again, I would love to because it was honestly just really, really fun. As silly as I look, it was kind of fun to jump back to a previous time and do their beauty trends. Again, the beauty aspect was somewhat fun, but, but we must remember it was a horrible time for women, women of color, people of color, people of different religions. It was a really bad time. We don't want to go back there. <laughs> Some of us are a little concerned we might already be headed back there. But um, anyway, please head over and follow me on Instagram if you would not mind. I'll be posting photos of this amazing look. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!